when you have Krishna present to guide you through the Gita. All you need to do is follow Him. Remember that Krishna is already there. Don't imagine, don't speculate. The Gita is an instruction to be followed. The Gita is a song to be loved. My name is Vivek. Um, I'm currently doing my B, uh, third year of my B.Tech in IIT Hyderabad. So my question is that, uh, what does it mean by finding yourself? Does it mean like finding your strengths and weaknesses? Or finding your true potential? In what does it actually mean by finding yourself? Like, if finding myself is in journey like what is the destination what does it actually mean and what what would be the like final destination yeah it's a cool catchphrase these days no find yourself yeah. be yourself I mean, live it, it yourself an ancient question i think like mm, yeah. or... but the current uh, phrase has nothing to do with the ancient pursuit hmm? be yourself express yourself when you say is uh, finding myself about knowing my strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you see, it's uh, going around in circles. Hmm? I want to find myself. I want to know my strengths and weaknesses. Whose strengths and weaknesses? Whose? That's the question. Finding myself is about asking who is asking. The question that asks, who is the questioner? From where is everything arising within me? Hmm? All this that I attach my name to. I say, things are arising within me. Within whom? I say, I am angry. Who is angry? Who is that entity? And is that entity really separate from its emotion, from its state if I say I am angry, am I really distinct from that anger? If I say I am asking, am I really separate from the inquiry? That's uh, the question, who am I or koham? It's very central to Vedant. Right? You see, we operate like a machine. Hmm? And there is something in the machine that does not want to admit that a process is in motion. It rather wants to assert that an agency is in motion. That's the myth that true spirituality seeks to debunk. We think of the action of a process as the action of an agency. Hmm? That fictitious agency is called I or ego or little or false self. The thing is, if you are thinking that thought is the output of a thousand environmental things, environmental and circumstantial and biological, that's where that thought is coming from. Right? It's an entire network resulting in that thought. But there exists a fictitious agency that loves to claim, I just thought something. Or that I am the thinker. You thought of nothing. The thought happened. The thought happened. And it's very... Intriguing how somebody arose to claim ownership of the thought. The thought is a standalone thing. Hmm? The thought has no single point origin. The thought is not fathered by any one person. The thought is a collective output. 
millions of factors have contributed to that single thought that just came. But the ego loves to assert, I am the thinker. Hmm? Something gets cooked and some random person walks in and says, I did it. I did it. That's the ego. And that's why the ego is called false. It's an entire process. Entire process. Process, 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 process. That process is classically called as Prakriti. The knower of that process is called the Sakshi or Atma. You are not to needlessly interfere with the process. Your role is not to meddle with the process. Your role is to be liberated of the process so that the process can keep doing its own thing and you are at a distance, liberated, witnessing, free, joyful. Thank you, Ajay. Namaste, Ajay Ji. My name is Manisavina. Is staying quiet make things easier? Should we not say anything in a personal or general situation, even when we strongly disagree the situation also, or else the things are going bad, or something not good, though also we should not say anything. Please let me clarify. What is the objective? That has to be clear. Sometimes it's important to speak out. Sometimes it's important to stay quiet. Sometimes it makes sense to say little. Sometimes it makes sense to insist very hard. All the options are useful in their own time and place. The objective has to be clear. There can be no ideal or one answer. What is it that I want to do? It, mean, it means, uh, for example, the situation is about uh, when we are general situation is going on regarding some uh, some issues uh, like uh, women. I am a simple woman, so women generally, uh, when it comes to the home uh, home purpose, when discussions are going on, at that time we should say. It is not at all correct. The thing is completely not good for us. At the time, we should have to open our mouth. But if we open the mouth, discussion will be goes on into the argument. So at that time, we should be very quiet. Or else should we say anything? That no, you, you have to ensure that the right thing gets done. Right? If you always keep quiet... When the wrong thing is on the roll, how will the right thing get done? You must be clear about your intentions. If the intention is to get uh, something good done in the household, let's say for the family, then why would you necessarily keep quiet when something adverse is happening. Is it not obvious? Hmm? Something that will that is arising from uh, a point of illusion and will lead to complications and suffering is happening. And you are a well-wisher. How will you necessarily keep quiet? So you speak out, but that cannot be a rule. You cannot uh, always uh, keep arguing. So one has to be discreet. Uh, the, the end is not the argument or the interference or the silence. The end is peace and creativity and betterment. Whatsoever leads to that end has to be exercised. Thank you.
Thank you for unmuting me. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Prashant ji. Wonderful. I have been sorry I could not be there for all the time. I had a class up to seven thirty, so I was stuck with the class. Uh, otherwise, I would have been there from the beginning. But the last one hour has been wonderful. I have been listening. You are answering the questions that uh, all our colleagues have been asking, uh, and that has been very enlightening. Many of uh, my thoughts uh, reverberate with your thoughts, and, and that's why I was able to kind of uh, associate myself a lot with the thoughts that you have. And I would love to see you again coming, possibly physically this time, uh, as, as some stage to our campus, possible. We would love to have you and interact more with uh, the students and the faculty and the staff. Thank you very much for a wonderful evening with us. And we look forward to seeing you again on our campus. You. You know, I'm glad and very grateful to the institution that it uh, facilitated this interaction. The, the two and a half hours almost, they were a blink uh, of the eye and uh, it was a very um, touching and very engaging discussion we had. And uh, I too um, am looking for uh, another interaction. And thank you so much. Thank, thank you, so you much. Thank you very much.